This may look like something Shango 066 pulled out of an abandoned mining town, but actually found this on the side of the road. It was among a collection of items set out for trash pickers. The first time I drove by, I saw a 90s boombox, which looked like a pretty high-end model, and also what looked like a miniature liquid box fan. It was one of those smaller versions that looked just like their big ones, but was about half the size. But by the time I came back about 10 minutes later, both of those items were gone. But I noticed there was some vintage audio equipment also there. There was two 1970s receivers. Neither of them were high-end. One had a built-in 8-track player, and the other one had a BSR record changer with a big chunk missing out of its dust cover and also some old bookshelf speakers. And then I saw this. It's a Zenith record changer. Don't know if it has their famous MicroTouch 2G tone arm or not. Obviously I can't even see it through all the dirt on the dust cover. And I also noticed it includes a phono preamp. So it obviously has a magnetic cartridge of some kind. And it looks like somebody included the packaging of a replacement needle for it. So obviously I'll need to do quite a bit of cleaning up of this and hopefully I can get it working. So I'm not going to show the cleaning process on video so you'll just see the finished product when I'm done. Well it's certainly amazing what kind of difference some window cleaner and paper towels can make. That's all of the cleaning products I've used so far. Dust cover is not perfect it has some scratches and scuffs in it but that's to be expected in any turntable that's 40 plus years old. And it was not actually that dirty inside. It was just rather dusty and I was able to clean it up pretty well. And this is not a MicroTouch 2G tone arm, but it is still pretty nice. It has an adjustable counterweight and anti-skating. I don't know where it was set because I was knocking these things around when I was cleaning it. I pulled off the stylus so it wouldn't get damaged when I was cleaning. And I probably can't show this on video, but it actually seems to have an intact stylus needle on there. So that may still be good. I don't know what kind of cartridge this is. But I guess I can look up what kind of stylus that is based on the information on this uh, package I got with it. What does it say here? Sure M71, 74, 75, 81. So it's one of those. And if this is actually the stylus that was in this package, it has an elliptical 0.3 by 0.7 mil stylus and it's designed for a tracking force of 2 grams. Product of Japan made for Fran Steel. The generic stylus. And I noticed this has a setting for 78, so I could get a 3 mil stylus on this and use it for playing 78s. And the turntable spins nice and freely. I did not have to lubricate it or anything. So it's not like a BSR where the grease in there turns to glue after so many years and it the whole thing gets frozen up. This is still nice and free. And it still shows some signs of life. I put it on auto and then spin the platter. You can see the tone arm acts as if it's going to play a record. I don't have the stylus on there right now. And if I put it over there to auto return, it auto returns as well. So hopefully that will be working. So I was brave and connected it to AC power and at first the motor was barely even moving at all but now it actually looks like it's trying to come up to correct speed but I don't know if it has enough torque to operate the mechanism. Oh, it's trying, but then it just comes to a stop. I don't know if this is idler drive or belt drive. I'm assuming idler drive because that's what most of these record changers were, but uh, I'll have to pull off the platter and see what's going on with that. The phono preamp also cleaned up nice, so I'll see if this works as well. I may have myself a fully working free turntable with a potentially still good stylus just for some cleaning up with paper towels and window cleaner. So here's the progress with the Zenith record changer. I removed the platter. It wasn't that difficult. I just pulled out the spindle and curiously even though this was obviously designed to be a record changer it only came with this short spindle for playing one record at a time. 
I assume it originally came with both this and the longer spindle for stacking up records and the previous owner only left the short one in it when I got it. Then I took off this trim piece. I just stuck a little screwdriver in the hole and pried it up and it popped off without causing any damage to it. Then I took off the C-clip and then the platter just pulled right off. And it obviously is an idler wheel drive mechanism. I did lubricate the parts of the mechanism I could see and the main problem is that this rubber idler wheel is hard as a rock. It's lost all of its flexibility. There are various ways to fix that. Obviously you could just replace it or you could shave it down and then put an o-ring over it which is what some people do. There's also a product called rubber rejuvenator which softens up the rubber and there are various homebrew solutions for trying to do the same thing without paying for that expensive product and one of the solutions I saw mentioned is goo gone so I'm gonna get a cotton swab and put some goo gone on this and see if that softens it up well I don't know how that goo gone is gonna work on the idler wheel but it did a great job of removing the rubber residue from the motor spindle there and this is a very quiet motor in this turntable. You probably can't even tell that I have it running right now. So, we'll see how this turns out. Meanwhile, I checked the stylus with my little $2 Chinese 60X microscope. And it's actually still good. It actually looks almost brand new. And if we look at the final cartridge from the bottom, we can see it's a Shure M75. It's an M75 CSZ to be specific. And I found it in the 1978 Shure catalog as part of their Extra Durability High Trackability Cartridges series. They list the M75 CS. I guess in my case the Z on the end stands for Zenith. And one notable thing about this cartridge is its extremely high output of 9.3 millivolts. Most magnetic phono cartridges have an output of around 3 to 5 millivolts. So I got out a record I don't really care about. This is one of those sound-alike records that were popular in the 70s. And I connected it to my little battery-powered mixer here for phono input and on this turntable even though it has a counterweight it also has a spring to adjust the tracking force so I adjusted it for two grams and I set the anti-skidding to two grams you can see it has scales here for elliptical stylus as well as a conical stylus so I set it to two on the scale for elliptical stylus because that's why I have installed and it is basically working. You can put on auto here, but that rubber tire is still not in good shape, even after trying to renew it with the goo gone, because I had to help it, otherwise it would just stop under the stress of trying to run the automatic mechanism. But once it gets going, it's okay. Although I can tell it's playing slow. Not very slow but noticeably slow and it's getting quieter I think as I'm using it more but you can hear that that rubber tire in there is making noise so it may still need that tire to be replaced or it may have to do the trick of shaving it down and putting an o-ring around it otherwise it is playing and I'll give you a little sample of how it sounds you tell yourself you're not my you don't even know your mind You could have a change of heart If you don't lose that number You don't want to call nobody else Midnight at the Oasis Send your candles away Shadows painting on face So 
so it still needs some more work, but hey, it's not bad for a free turntable, especially considering the condition it was in. It's model number MC9020. I looked up the service manual and it's dated October 1979, so it's actually newer than I thought this thing was. And here it says, no user serviceable parts inside refer servicing to qualified service personnel. Well, I declare myself to be qualified. I cleaned out all the old grease in this entire mechanism. There's a nice big AC motor on rubber shock mounts to absorb some of the vibration. And here it says Plessy Consumer Products. And here it says Made in England. This is a Gerard record changer. That's the company who actually made this for Zenith. Well, I tried all sorts of homebrew solutions to repair this idler wheel. I tried Goo Gone. That didn't really help. I tried sandpapering the edge. Again, that made only a minor improvement. I tried coating it with liquid electrical tape, and that actually made it worse. And I tried soaking it in brake fluid for half an hour. That made basically no difference. And finally, the solution ended up being exactly what you see here. I found a rubber band that was exactly the right size to fit it around the edge. And I glued it in place. That was strange. I heard uh, aircraft interference on the radio. Of course, now they're not going to do it now that I'm trying to listen for it. That sometimes happens on my 1994 Panasonic stereo as well, especially on the upper end of the FM band. You can hear airplane transmissions cut in on your FM broadcast. Starkel approach, Skyhawk 25 Delta 2000, request 3000. Anyway, back to the record changer here. As I said, I found a small rubber band just the right size to fit around the edge and I glued it in place. And so far it's held up. I was a little worried that as soon as I would change speeds it would pop off, but it hasn't so far. And with this kind of idler, the diameter does not affect the speed of the record player. So it doesn't matter that it made it slightly larger with this rubber band around the edge of it. If this was a more valuable or sentimental record player I would send this in to Gary at thevoiceofmusic.com and for $28 he'll exchange this for one where the rubber has been entirely replaced and that's the real solution for something like this but for a free junker record player like this this is a free solution so now the turntable operates silently you can't hear all that rumbling anymore and the automatic function works Although it does slow down quite a bit when it's getting going, but it does not stop like it did before. And I adjusted it so it lowers the tone arm in the right place. I have it raised so it doesn't go all the way down. And the automatic return works as well. And if you're working on one of these yourself, this is the screw to adjust the tracking force. This is the screw to adjust where it sets down the tone arm at the beginning of the record, which also controls where it picks up at the end of the record and where it lays down the tone arm when it's done. So that's sort of an all-in-one adjustment. And this screw here, the one that's vertical, adjust how high the tone arm lifts up both with the automatic mechanism and with the manual lifter. So those are your three main adjustments as well as the anti-skating. The only remaining problem is that it takes a lot of effort to operate this speed selector switch and I've cleaned and lubricated all of the accessible parts of the mechanism but this selector switch has a big long linkage going all the way over here and there are parts of it that are hidden by the tone arm mechanism, so I probably would need to tear the whole thing apart to really get that working properly. But it still works, so you just got to really pull on it. And as for this little preamp it came with, after a good cleaning it works, except the left channel is louder than the right channel. 
and I know it's not the turntable's fault because I tried reversing the input connections and still the left channel is louder than the right. So I have my mixer hooked back up and let's close this video by opening the door with Pete Townsend. But people keep repeating, you'll never fall in love.